Hi everyone, welcome, welcome to my channel. This is the second video of the series. This is the introduction to the XSLD. So in the previous video, I have shown you three XMLs and in this video, I'm going to use those XML data to transform, transform using XSLD. So um, instead of telling you the concepts first and then example, I want to show the examples and then explain the concepts. And I'm going to build one concept or other one concept or other slowly so the first concept i'm going to show you is the bare minimum XML accessibility uh, how it looks uh, and all these things and then i'm going to show you uh, for each and then what is the difference uh, and then you know other things right so one other thing i'm going to show you in this video is uh, i'm going to show you a online platform where you can try your own accessibility you don't need any uh, anything to be installed in your machine it's online and you can just place your input xml and accessibility and you can run on the fly it shows the results okay let's get started this is the article for this video i'm going to give you a link for this article in the uh, youtube description and i'm going to place the youtube link as well here so these are the topics there, there are five topics uh, i'm going to cover in this video the very first one is online accessibility editor right i have given this uh, link freeformatter.com xsl transformer right if you click on this it will have two text text boxes one is the one is for xml and second is for xsl and you can use either of these two buttons to uh, generate the output Okay, uh, I'll show you, I'll show you uh, how to run it. The very first topic uh, or very first XSLD I'm going to show you is based out of the very first XML I have shown you in the previous video. This is the same XML. Uh, so just copy this into the XML text area. And before I go into the technical details of this XSLD, I'll show you the output first and then we'll see what is what are all the commands which which has generated that kind of output. So I'm going to use in the new window. Then if you observe, it has generated three employee IDs followed by employee names. Then so where is this coming from? There is the employee ID here, employee ID, and then employee ID, and name name is coming from here so why is it uh, you know it's not properly formatted just throwing the information as it is is that is that is the reason why it is bare minimal xml i have not formatted anything i'm just pulling the information as it is and now throwing it out i just wanted to show you a very bare minimal there's nothing much here the the logic is sitting here this is the main logic and uh, everything else is will be common in all the other accessibilities as well so i'll tell you how we have traversed the employee is root node in this case the root node name is also root and followed by a row that's where the you know child information will be there and then followed by employee in a similar way we have used the name i'll take a step back and i'll explain you what is this the header and other information which will be common in all the other accessibilities which i am not going to go into details unless and until it's needed that is the the namespace this is the xsl what it, this is the logic uh, you know which is sitting actually the xsl logic the, the engine of xsl i should say and then we are defining the uh, output format output format as text uh, in some of the future videos, we'll see how to generate an XML output format as well. And uh, I didn't cover this. So this is a version 2.0. The latest version is 3.0 is also available. It's just that we'll we'll see example and then we'll see where where we can why we have to use 3.0 and all these things. And this is the template. Template is like uh, we can compare with a function with other programming languages. Not exactly function, but in some way we can compare it. And then when we say match forward slash, it just matches everything. You are not uh, limiting to anything. 
we are just matching everything that means we are just trying to read everything from root to uh, from root okay and of course i've already explained this and this is the closing of template and style sheet so i'm not going to go into the details of uh, you know all in all the next following exercises i'm not going to go into the details only the logic part i'm going i'm going to explain right so we saw this output this is the output so i i want you to please try this uh, in this online accessibility editor and then try it with yourself and then try to change for example i have just given employee id here a name maybe you want to replace the name with the company you know company then you can see the companies here right um uh, one thing is accessibility and xml are case sensitive if you give small case it will not work see so it is a case sensitive you have to be careful there okay now let's jump into second example where i have used for each a uh, comma separation and a new line okay before going to the details of the xslt i want to show you the output first and then we'll step back and then uh, understand the xslt i'm using the same xml though i have repeated here but it's the same xml the only thing changing is xslt i'll show you the output see here the output is little bit uh better formatted it has employee id name as a header header and uh this is the data 1001 is employee id and the employee names and everything okay right? how did we how did we achieve this so this is the heart of the logic right so very first is header that whatever we want we, we are not this is, there is no logic here we just wanted to put employee id comma name so that's why we are placing it within the xsl text so whatever is within the you know, xsl text it will be uh, printed as it is in the output there are some exceptions uh, like for example we want to put a uh, next line in this case so we have to put ampersand uh, hash and then xa and column so uh this is a next line so if you observe after name which is the next line and then the for each is coming so for each if you observe for each we are traversing root and row so that means root and row so we are, we were we are already here now so in the previous example xml we were traversing on this value of level itself but in this case because we are already traversed we have already traversed within the for each we don't have to traverse again we can directly use employee id and of course i wanted to place a comma between employee id and name that's why i'm using it in the text and again i've used the next line that's how the output is coming so that's uh, that's how we can use the for each and a comma and new line right and uh, I just before we go to the next example i just want to mention that i am not going into the too much details for each and every example i am going to show you only the logic part of it i want you to practice and try to understand look at the data and uh, try to understand why why it is coming up and all those things of course i am going to tell you the main logic okay for the next example what i am going to show you is the next state for each what does it mean it means i'm going to use for each within the for each so for this i'm going to use a different xml this has employee information along with that uh, one employee has dependent information one spouse and one child okay I'm going to replace the xml part of it of course i'm going to replace the xsl part of it and transform a new window now you can observe along with the employee id name i have added dependent dependent name as well but just to make uh, distinguish easily i have added dashes here 
before uh, dipping in name that's just wanted to make it readable that's it so now we'll take a step back and see how the xml is uh, xslt is formatted so the header is same and uh, for each is same and everything is same but we have used one more for each that is ab dependent ab is the namespace on the xml and then dependent so if you observe we are not traversing from the root level but because we are already on the for each it has already traversed through row or we have to traverse through each dependent okay and uh, before we even uh, print the employee id or sorry uh, dependent name we want to print something you can put any other thing uh, doesn't matter I'll just use uh, dashes use dependent name then it has dependent name here okay so this is how we traverse for example we have one more employee with dependent information right just want to show you it doesn't matter whatever the number whatever the number it is it is going to come out as it is okay then now travel going to transform in a new window see here this is coming so the next example this is the last example of this video is conditional for each so for example uh, we have this information and then uh, we, we want to limit based on some condition so in this case I am limiting based on the company name I don't want all the employees but I want to see only the employees from you know some company USA GMS USA right how can we do that I will show you the example first um, I think I am using the same ex uh, same XML that's okay I am going to replace anyway See here, we didn't get any other employees from a different company. So all I did is I've just added a simple condition here. Company is GMS USA. That's it. No other change to XSLD. So what if we change some of the other employees company? In this case, this employee, second employee is uh, UK, right? Let's just say we change it to USA. See, second employee, uh, James Taylor also come, uh, came in the output, right? So, is there any other way other than, uh, you know, uh, placing within the, within the for each, right? Is, of course, we can always write, uh, I'm going to, yeah, I, I'll, I'll take this as an opportunity to show you comment part of it how to comment in xml is the same way as in uh, xsl right this is how you comment i wanted to all i wanted to do is to remove the condition and then i'll run it now we saw all the three rows right i want to add a condition exclusively so it is XSL if test equal to the same thing condition is same ah so it should be within the for each right and of course whenever we have if we have to close it before for each XSL. Yes. let's see how it shows see the same output as we have kept the condition uh, within the x uh, you know for each the same way we can uh, represent we can represent a different way we can write a same logic in a different way 
right there is some other thing called uh, choose i'll show you that uh, about uh, now choose uh, in a different video so this is about uh, this session this video uh, i hope uh, you like the content i hope you learned something today um, so we'll meet in the next video